is true when you hear somebody say that professional wrestling in some ways is a mirror of our society of pop culture. It really truly is. Because here we are on Wednesday. Wednesday. And instead of talking about what happened at NXT TakeOver War Games Chicago or at Survivor Series or what happened on Raw Monday night with Seth Rollins. Did he turn heel? Is he already a heel? Who knows? Who cares? It's Wednesday afternoon and still the number one thing in the wrestling community that people are talking about is what went down over the weekend between Corey Graves and Mauro Ranola. We truly are a bunch of drama kings and drama queens. Hence all the tweets about this topic. Hence my video on this topic. Hence those of you that chose to watch this video. Those of you that are choosing to comment on this video and either thumbs it up or thumbs it down. We feed off of the drama. We live for the drama. It is who we are. And it's just so ridiculous. And this whole situation between Graves and Morrow is just stupidity of the highest order on different levels. And you start off with Corey Graves. He is not playing a character. He is not being a heel. Because what the hell would he know about that with this Dollar General CM Punk wannabe frickin' ass? He vacillates so much from one side of the fence to the other in his commentary and so forth that you sit there and you say, what the hell are you supposed to be? But here he is, apparently watching TakeOver War Game Chicago on Saturday night, and he's taking shots at the commentary team. Just why? It goes back to the whole thing months back, if you remember, with him and Booker T. Oh, we worked all of you. You worked yourselves. Did you make any money off it? No, you idiots. They ain't working any damn money. So he sits there, and if you haven't seen the tweets, please take the time to actually read them. And I say that because full and complete context is important. Instead of doing what most people usually do, which is sitting there and reacting initially and immediately and being very emotional and very frankly illogical and idiotic about things. What is not idiotic or illogical to say is that Corey Graves is a penis. He absolutely is. There's just no place for it. There's just no need for it. If anything, it speaks to Corey Graves' insecurities about himself and what he does in his job, that he has to sit there and try to undercut other people who are much more widely respected for the work that they do in that same common field. You know, would Corey Graves like if everybody took shots on him for the fact that he was still technically married even if going through a divorce when he started doinking around with Carmella? No, probably not. But it's like, this dude, this Cho, just can't help himself. He's always got to take some type of pot shots. He's always got to do something. He's always got to try and undercut somebody like him. And I just don't get it. Like, what would possess you as you're sitting there watching the show Saturday night to where you felt like there was a need to tweet that out? Just why? Just why? And you know he's not sorry about it. Even coming out and doing a half-ass apology on his podcast, that ain't freaking doing anything. I'd almost respect him more if he said, no, I'm not sorry. You know what? Mauro Ronaldo's a bitch ass. And if he can't stand the heat, get the hell out of the kitchen. But instead, he does this crap, and then he hides behind it. Ah, like, why is Corey Graves even a thing? Like, in, in the whole aftermath of this, why does WWE put up with him? He brings you nothing to the table. It's not like he has a huge audience going years and years back. Nobody gives a crap about him. Nobody's paying money to hear him on commentary. Nobody's paying money to go see him. You're the WWE. Your machine rolls on with or without him. So be without him. Let him go somewhere else. Teach him a real life lesson. But even with all that being said, Morrow, I don't know what's wrong with that dude. 
And before y'all sit there and hit me with the mental health thing and you don't know what it's like, lots of people out there in the world deal with a myriad, a variety of assorted mental health issues. Some more pronounced and more serious than others, sure. But again, different people struggle with it in their own way. I struggle with mine. But what I don't do is try to go on social media and always tweet about it and use it as kind of a crutch and as kind of a sympathy-getting sob story to try and build up my self-esteem like Mauro Ronaldo does. And in the grand scheme of things, no, I don't have a bunch of sympathy for him. When you really look at what Corey Graves tweeted, it was not that bad. It really, truly wasn't. Corey Graves can be a twat. And what he tweeted was not that serious and did not necessitate nearly the reaction it has gotten. All of those things can be true. So here's what bothers me about our modern discourse, just in general. It could be politics, it could be life, it could be wrestling, it could be anything. Everybody's either got to be right or they got to be wrong. And if you're wrong, good luck to you and God bless you because it's over. The first time you do something and you screw up, here comes cancel culture to try and knock you down forever. Where mistakes and failures and being wrong used to be thought of as opportunities to learn and grow and improve and get better. Everybody is so goddamn worried about being right that they don't care about doing what's right. But furthermore, they don't ever want to put themselves in a situation where they could potentially be vulnerable. And you see it here with both Graves and Ronaldo. A bunch of insecure jackasses. Just like a lot of people when it comes to wrestling. Aim right. No, aim right. No, I hate you. No, I hate you. How dare you have an opinion different than mine? If I don't like something that you said, I'm going to flame you and then I'm going to block you because that will show you. Or I'm going to call you out, and then when I'm refuted, I'm going to mute you or block you, because that's what the bitch does. But seriously, though, if Morrow was that bothered by what Corey Graves tweeted about him, we've got deeper issues here outside of just the bipolar crutch or this and that. Because it really, truly wasn't that bad. And I am not here in any way, shape, or form to sit there and dismiss anything when it comes to mental health, when it comes to any type of these mental issues. Because I know throughout my adult life, even go back to childhood, the bouts of battles I've had off and on with depression and so forth, the fact that at almost 39 years of age, I haven't either overdosed on pills or put a bullet in the back of my freaking head is damn near a miracle and probably unfortunate for a lot of you. But again, what I don't do is always tweet about it, looking for sympathy, asking people to feel sorry for me, and none of that crap which Morrow does. If that bothered you that much, then that means one of a couple of things, Morrow. Either number one, you should have addressed it with them via Twitter or face-to-face, -face, period. If it bothered you that much, that's how you should have dealt with it. Number two, maybe, just maybe, you could have learned by now, being in a whole high-profile spot like being a commentator for one of WWE shows, that not everybody is going to say things that you agree with. So as a result, you should have some type of ability to ignore that crap. Treat Corey Graves like he's just another mark, because in the grand scheme of things, that's what the hell he is, Morrow. But to sit there because of a couple of tweets and say, I'm not going to do Survivor Series, and now it looks like I'm not going to do NXT this week. Nut up and grow up a little bit. I mean, for crying out loud, you got all types of people that deal with all different types of mental health issues that don't sit there and turn tail and run at the first sign of adversity. Or... If they are the type of personality that is prone to do that, you know what they do in some cases? They learn how to avoid those damn triggers. 
So maybe it's a good thing that you deleted your Twitter account because clearly if anybody says anything to you that is other than absolutely glowingly positive, it is going to get you really butt hurt in the worst possible way. How in the hell are you ever going to improve? How in the hell are you ever going to get better if nobody can say anything to you about anything without you getting all emotional like a little bitch? How does that work? It doesn't work. Knowing the environment that wrestling can bring, knowing the environment specifically cultivated within WWE, it is not an ideal place for somebody to work who A, has serious mental health issues like Harold clearly does, and B, has chosen, for whatever reason, to not try to have a better grip on it, and don't give me that crap that he has. Because if he has, he wouldn't have reacted like this. He wouldn't have. You learn how to avoid the triggers. Or you just let it go. Like, if that little bit bothers you, I wonder how the hell you ever got to where you were to begin with. It's a damn miracle. Because how the hell could anybody ever tell you you ever did anything wrong? How could anybody ever give you any critiques or feedback or constructive criticism without you sitting there every time you say, I want to keep my body and go home. You know, the reality is, if it takes that little bit for Morrow to get that upset, where he doesn't even want to come to work. He's got other coals in the fire. He's done really, really well for himself. Dude, you don't need to be in WWE anymore. It's like the same crap with JBL a couple of years ago when you left. And now you were back. And now we've got another situation, which we know deep down is not anywhere near as bad as what was going on with JBL. Can you now see people that maybe Morrow is a little bit of the problem too? Because he is. If you can't sit there and ignore that stuff or react confidently or assertively to that, then this is not an environment you need to be in. This is not a place you need to be. And frankly, if I'm WWE, I don't know if I want to be bothered with the dude anymore. Because number one, Frankly, as stupid as what some of Corey Graves tweeted about Saturday night was, some of it was also kind of true. Mauro has a tendency to over-talk every freaking body, doesn't let a lot of other people speak. So you got Nigel, you got freaking Beth Phoenix, and they're hardly saying a damn thing. All the while he's making out-of-place references to rap music like it's going to give him some type of street cred. No, dog, that ain't how this works. Corey Graves is a twat. Corey Graves is an idiot for tweeting that stuff for other people to see. Corey Graves knew what the hell he was doing and he didn't care. And Morrow is also way too insecure and ins insensitive him damn self. And he apparently either A, hasn't gotten the help he really needs, or B, isn't choosing to seek it out, or C, is more comfortable with people enabling him to where he doesn't have to learn how to better cope and deal with the issues that he has. All of these things can be true. Because this is ridiculous. I couldn't imagine somebody tweeting something like that and then that being the impetus for me not showing up to work. And I know people are going to sit there on both sides of the fence and talk about, oh, Corey Graves should be fired if that's all it takes for you to get fired, then what the hell is anybody ever going to want to do with that company? You know, yeah, you could say, well, this should be an opportunity for Corey Graves to learn and improve and grow and get better as a person, but he's a dick and a twat, so he won't, and you're absolutely correct. But this should be also be an opportunity for Morrow to really take a look at himself and say, you know what? I can either continue to make excuses and use this mental health stigma, this mental health condition like bipolar as a crutch, or I can fight harder, I can fight better, and do something about it, or remove myself from the equation of the situations that they apparently give me so much heartburn and distress. Something's got to give here, folks. Because imagine if you're the WWE and you're getting ready for an even bigger show.
You're getting ready for the Royal Rumble. You're getting ready for WrestleMania. And you've got Morrow in a good spot. Now all of a sudden, backstage, somebody breaks wind in front of him. And all of a sudden, he's like, oh my god, this has triggered me so much. That gas from their ass, I can't go on and perform. It's ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. If Corey Graves had called him real names, and if he had really savagely went after him, I could get it. But he didn't do either of those things. He said dumb, stupid stuff, but that is entirely different from that other thing. Now, nah, the reality is, is Morrow needs to sit there and toughen up just a little bit or learn how to better ignore it, learn how to better avoid it, or completely remove himself from the situation. It's that simple. It is that simple. Because it's not going to get any better. And frankly, when this comes up again in six months and a year from now, we're going to be talking about the same things. You can't always use the same crutch every single time, people. At some point in time, it starts to lose its luster a little bit. So as far as I'm concerned, Corey Graves needs to better learn how to shut the hell up. And Mauro Ronaldo needs to better learn how to man the hell up a little bit. And both of them can stop acting like the insecure punks that they are.